All right, all right, y'all. Welcome back to Remap Your Mind. It's time to create a life we design. And I am super excited today to be with my new friend, my sister and fellow doctor, Alexis Rhodes. You know, I actually met this sister on Clubhouse. All right, in the club house. <laughs> yes, in the club. <laughs> I love saying that. I don't know why. I just, you know, I think old school, we like, we used to go to the club. <laughs> yes, now we in the club online. <laughs> online, exactly, exactly. And, you know, she has this uh, group called uh, Black Minds That Matters. And it and, and the conversations I, I just I pulled up in, a, in one of the rooms one Monday evening and I just the conversation was just delicious and, and wonderful and empowering. And, you know, it, for any of you who listen, who also are on Clubhouse, you know that it can be hard to find a really good room where you connect with people of like spirit. And this was one of those rooms. And so I immediately reached out to Dr. Alexis and, and said, you know what, I really want to connect with you. And there, you know, begins our story. So I want to welcome Dr. Alexis Rhodes uh, of The Road to Success and, um, and, and welcome you to the show. How are you doing today? I am doing beautifully. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for reaching out and allowing me to be on your platform. I am so grateful. Um, and definitely, you know, behind the scenes, we've been having wonderful conversations. So I can't wait to continue to have this conversation online and for other people to be preview to what we've been experiencing with each other. Yes, yes. I mean, I, I, I already told you, you know, offline, this is like, <laughs> the first of a few conversations that we're going to be having. I think that you really are someone who is uh, like spirit in my world. And it, it's, it, uh, it, is, it is hard to find sometimes in this day and age, isn't it? Definitely. definitely. Especially during a pandemic. Definitely <laughs> during the pandemic. And that's why I liked Clubhouse. Like when it came out at first, I'm like, wow, I get to connect with people that maybe would have took maybe light years to connect with, or maybe I would have mm -hmm. never been able to connect with. But I've been able to connect with so many different people across the United States and mm -hmm. even outside of the United States. And that's the beauty of social media. And people have to realize that, like you have to utilize the tool the way it fits for you. Um, yes, of course, you know, it, there's bad that comes with the good, but you don't have to focus on the bad, just focus on the good, which is the connections for me, right? That's right, exactly, exactly, absolutely. So, I mean, I want to, to you to tell the listeners who you are and yes. what you do and a little bit about where you're from and, and, and what you're up to. Yes, so my name is Dr. Alexis Rhodes. I am a psychologist and assistant professor at a university. And my background in psychology is forensics, community, clinical. I have worked in forensic hospitals. I have worked at one of the worst prisons in California. Um, also, as well as um, with, in relation to my community work, I have an organization called No Black Girl Left Behind, where mm -hmm. we connect, uplift, and inspire Black women. And myself and my founders, there's two other founders. Uh, we created this organization because during that time period, this is around 2016, 2017, during that time period, uh, we were in school and we didn't have that, um, we didn't have that support as young black women becoming doctors. And you know that we make up, even as psychologists, and I know the numbers is probably even a little less than even medical, but as psychologists, black women, we make up 3%, right? Mm -hmm, or even less yeah. than that. And not having that support, we're like, you know what, we can support one another. As well as during that time, we just saw how the media would portray black women as mm -hmm. um, always, you know, catty and not uplifting. And that's not my experience at all. Um, maybe in my younger years, but you know, we're teenagers, right? But mm -hmm. as an adult, that wasn't my experience at all. So I just wanted us to create an organization where, no, we can all come together to connect, uplift, inspire and then also promote self-care that's the key point because black women mm -hmm. we carry the world on our backs and mm -hmm. we put everyone before us and we have to take care of ourselves so yeah. you know no black girl left behind is, is that reminder of yes we can be the pillar in our communities yes we can go after the things we want in life 
But when we're doing that, we have to make sure we put ourselves first as well, making sure that we take care of ourselves. So that's what we do. We promote that. We have workshops, we have brunches. We have um, meetings called Black Girls Peace. We, uh, you know, mm -hmm. get back to our communities with uh, a backpack drive every year, school supplies every year, a homeless kit drive every year. And then starting next year, we're starting a mentorship amongst our ambassadors, um, which we have ambassadors across the United States because three women just couldn't just go everywhere across the United States. So we have yeah. individuals who are like-minded. It's like, you know what? We'll carry the torch in our cities. So we have ambassadors. Mm -hmm and the DMV area and uh, Pennsylvania and California and Chicago and Atlanta, mm -hmm. uh, South mm -hmm. Carolina. And they carry the torch as well because they understand the importance of the work of being together um, and, and, and promoting um, this unity amongst you know black women. So that's just yeah. one of the organizations that I have. But yes, I'm a well-traveled individual. I love to travel. That is my self-care. I've been to 32 countries. I can't wait Ooh. to yes. I can't wait to get back. <laughs> Thirteen of those countries were African countries. Myself and a yeah. friend, we um, we did that voyage together. It was like mm -hmm. our um, our coming to, um, mm -hmm. just understanding our roots, connecting with our roots, and we were able to travel mm -hmm. from 2018 and 2019 for three months to 13 African wow. countries and connect with the continent. And it felt like, you know, that Mr. and Puzzle piece that you're trying to find. And once you finally mm -hmm. fit it, it's like that level of like completeness. That's how it felt mm -hmm. like going to the continent, just feeling mm -hmm. like, wow, like I'm able to connect with a part of me that I didn't know that yearn. Like I yearn for that mm -hmm. connection and that understanding. Yeah. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, being of the African diaspora, I, I understand that importance of wanting to connect to the motherland. Um, yeah. And I've and then and I'm just promoting that for everyone, like for people to mm -hmm. go from the African diaspora, please go and connect and go to the continent. And just us, our our mission was to dispel this notion of, you know, that there's not this unity amongst Africans and, and individuals from the African diaspora. And it's actually the quite opposite. They were welcoming. Right. They kept asking, yeah. like, why don't we come home? Um yeah. it's just it's just a wonderful experience. So that's just a little yeah, bit about yeah. me. Um, it's so much. I do so much, but that's a little bit about me. And yes, yes. I love it. I love it. It's interesting. I went to, um, I, I've been wanting to go back. I went to Ghana when I was in residency and spent three weeks there on medical mission. And it was just one of the most life-giving experiences, just being able to travel the country, the South, the North, you know, to the, the, the coast and yes. really like experience and be with the villages and and how like just vibrant they were even in spite of the um, the need that they had for the medical care. They were just vibrant individuals, vibrant spirits. The children were just, you know, like yes. I was like, oh, OK, this is where we come from. Right. Yes. And so it's just it's 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 beautiful. I wanted to go like I, my plans are. Um, to get back to East Africa. I want to go to South Africa and, um, you know, Zimbabwe. Like just, I really want to get back to all and, and sort of travel like you did. I might not be able to do a, a whole three months since, uh, <laughs> but who knows, who knows? Maybe a summer trip when my son is old enough, we can we can go and trek it out. You know? Yes. But that's, that's super cool. That's super cool, which kind of leads me to, you know, our topic. We're talking about liberation that was that was our theme today yes. and you know i think that in the wake of everything that is going on we're starting to really get a sense of this whole idea of being in uh and immersed in white supremacy culture mm -hmm. like a culture that was set up you know hundreds of years ago that we inherited that we were born into because people colonized and brought us over colonized indigenous lands, right? And then there was this notion that was created 400 years ago that white people were um, better than uh, mm -hmm. any other uh, any other indigenous or brown skin uh, people, right? So then there's this mindset that we've been born into, which which you know we it's called we call colonization mindset, right. and people are waking up to it. Right. And it's like, well, how do you get free? Like, how do we begin to 
because uh, because the truth is the culture is is here we're right. in it we're right. we live we're living it every it. day yeah right but how do we be inside the culture without being uh, or being be in the culture without being of the culture how do we begin to disconnect ourselves from that i feel like for I, th I feel like we have to start creating our own systems to break free from the system that is in place, right? And we can do that because at the end of the day, if we look at it, we created everything within the system right now. Like we created as far as the culture, we created, um, it's just so many things that we created that they take from us. And if they're taking from us, then we have to look, sit back and think like, okay, well, if they're constantly taking from who we are as individuals, then why don't we just create our own? Why don't we build up our own communities? And then for me, that's the lacking piece. I feel like once we make it out a certain place, we don't go back and invest in our communities. Like, okay, well, I made it, I made it to point B. Not a lot of people can make it to point B. So then you go back as this individual is like, okay, what do we need? We need more doctors. We need more mm -hmm. artists. We need more, you know, whatever, you know, teachers in our communities, teaching our babies, which is so imperative, mm -hmm. right? Um, but the, I feel like that is the missing piece that we don't go back into our communities. Some do, but I feel like more, we need to go back into our communities so that we can just not just take from our communities, take the resources from our communities, because at the end of the day, like yourself and myself, we're doctors, right? But I don't live in my community anymore. So that's the resource outside of my community that has been mm -hmm. taken away. I am a product of my community, but I'm no longer feeding back into my community in the way that it is needed. And I think that's the right. missing piece. And that's where we need to start. We need to start by yeah. going back and putting the resources back into our communities and building up our communities in a way that right. we can sustain ourselves without having the help from outside but you know what you know I, yes and right mm -hmm. one of the things i think that is also missing that is is the awareness even the awareness of the level to which we are inside of this culture right right um i think that you know because <laughs> you know I, I do this whole um i do the the corporate anti-racism training and mm -hmm. There are these, you know, characteristics of white supremacy culture that if you didn't know they were characteristics you, of, of the culture, you, you, you would name it, but not realize this is, this is something that's, that has, is born and bred out of white supremacy culture. Right. And so there's an awareness that needs to be had that we're, we're living inside of a, a culture that we inherited so that we can then go back and remember our our own selves, our own culture, mm -hmm. our true selves, and not what we've been taught or fed, you right. know, not what we've been, because if you think about, you know, what's taught in schools in terms of history specifically. Only a, a little piece. And again, that starts sliver. within us though. We have to do that. We can't continue to rely on the system to teach us how to get out the system that doesn't make any sense, right? Mm -hmm. So it starts within ourselves and our, within our family dynamics. Mm -hmm. Again, yes, some of us do make it out and then understand the social political structures of the oppressed mm -hmm. and how mm -hmm. it is how we're constantly being manipulated. Therefore, that means that we have to take the ownership to go back into our communities and liberating mm -hmm. our communities by educating them on yeah. what to do and what this mindset is and how mm -hmm. um, they're they're trying to captivate us by keeping us in in in, in this social political uh structure that they have created right mm -hmm. but if we the way for us to break free is for us to go back and educate our people but if we don't do the education then this cycle is going to continue right we have to re-educate ourselves mm -hmm. because there's plenty of people who are outside of who have who have become successful and even people who have like started in um, you know, like started in the projects or started in place of struggle who have come out and who have made it and may not even still be aware that the, the history is different. 
And, yeah. and, you know, I think our generation or my generation, I, I can't remember if you're in my generation. I think you are, <laughs> but I don't want to, I don't want to age you more than you. <laughs> I, <understand. laughs> I mean, you know, we all look so young. All right, okay. But, uh, <laughs> That's what we have been blessed with. Right, right. But my, I know my generation, like, I can tell you that I had some awareness that there was there was black history beyond the black history that we learned in the month of February, you know? Um, and I grew up in Huntsville, Alabama. So it was like, mm -hmm. you know, black history and black history month, Harriet Tubman, Martin Luther King, uh, George Washington Carver. And, um, you know, we, th that was it, you know, a few mm -hmm. other people. Right. And that was it. And, and, and so there was all of these, um, you know, all these other people, all these other inventors, scientists, um, you know, mathematicians, uh, you know, activists that we didn't learn about. And it wasn't until, and, and luckily, I think it was probably later on, my mom and my dad started to, you know, give me new resources. But it wasn't until adulthood that I really started to learn how much we have contributed um, as, as Black people, people of the African diaspora, have contributed to everything every structure, how we have built the structure, the structure of the US has been built on our backs, right? Yep. And so um, that's been the history that now I can continue to learn for myself because I think I still have so much to learn and that in the process of my own learning, I can teach my son, mm -hmm. right? And then skills that I can give my son and communicate like levels of communication and depth of knowledge of self and pride in self. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing I love when I talk to my son is, is um, we, we've had these talks where on certain video games, when he chooses his characters, he always chooses the brown skin character, mm -hmm. you know? And, and you know, if I, well, and, I, and I've asked him, oh, what made you choose that character? Well, I mean, he's like me and I like my brown skin. And I love to hear That's him amazing. say that. Right, because you yeah. know there are studies that have been done where the the white doll and the black doll are sat in front of the kids, and which one do they choose? They choose the white doll, and when asked about the black doll, there's this negative connotation that's installed from from childhood. Right. So even as as you know, even as simple as beginning to you know empower our children to love themselves as they are and then learn about all of the things. Cause I see it as educating ourselves, but I also see it as educating the next generation mm -hmm. uh, because you know, these That's kids are learning faster and faster and faster and faster and they're smarter and smarter and they're doing things younger and younger. It's like, mm -hmm. let's get them on board. Cause yeah. sometimes the, the, the kids can be the teachers of the parents, you yeah. know? Yes, it's all about, and what you just mentioned there was representation. Yes. Representation matters in all aspects. And I feel like that is so important. Um, and just you mentioning that doll study. And I'm just, it, it just brought back memories. Just like, I remember growing up and my parents made sure to give me brown dolls. Um, dolls that, um, you know, had my skin complexion. It's not until mm. just now where they started to have dolls mm. with my hair texture. Because back then it yes. was straight hair. So right. I wanted straight hair or you know, my family has straight hair, so I want to straight hair. It's not until adulthood right. where I started, you know, embracing the way my hair grew out of my scalp. And it's just mm -hmm. like, I remember when um, my hairdresser that I grew up with, and I told her when I said, you know, I wanted to go natural. And she was like, oh, well, your hair is too thick. Because I always had thick hair, even when I had mm -hmm. perms. She's like, your mm -hmm. hair is too thick to go natural. And I remember regurgitating that to a, a friend. And my friend was like, what do you mean mm -hmm. you have your hair is too thick to go natural. That's, that's your hair. That's the, that's the perfect, that's the perfect uh, texture of hair to go natural. Right. And I was just like, I don't know. She just said my hair is too thick to go natural. And I believe that, right? Because she's an older woman. She's doing my, she did my mom's hair. She did my hair. So I'm like, oh, I can't go natural. My hair is too thick. But that was fed to us, right? That, you know, our hair texture was right. unruly. And we had to right. tame it. Just like how we had to tame ourselves, we're unruly, right? These are the, we have to look at the the messages, the hidden messages 
that are being mm -hmm. said to us constantly over and over. And that's just an example with hair, right? So, mm -hmm. but when I even just broke free from that and I'm just like, no, this is, your hair grows out of your scalp straight. So why can't mm -hmm. my hair, it grows out of my scalp this way. It could be curly, right. it could be a fro, it could be whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. This is how my hair grows. Like why, what's the difference between straight and this and why is mine unruly and yours is not right so right. just even breaking free from something so so small from that that concept mm -hmm. of our hair mm -hmm. right? right you know so great you know one of the other things is that as as you're talking it's like you know our parents they had a particular you know they were fed they inherited a particular conversation so right. like this is what we're we're being fed the other thing that we're being fed is media television yes. and i think it's so important to be mindful now that does not mean you have to go throw away your tv guys let's not get crazy all right because mm -hmm. i love television let's just i mean but you want to start to really look at the messages that are coming through you want to really start to to listen and look at the themes of series right mm -hmm. look at the themes look at how they cast series Look at the roles that Black people are pay playing inside of a series, even if it's a, di um, uh, a diverse series. What are the roles? Because those are unconscious messaging yes. being fed, right? When your child is watching a cartoon, please look at the cartoon before you allow them to just willy-nilly go and watch the cartoon. Yes. If they're listening to a podcast, listen to the stories, listen to the messaging of the podcast before you just go willy-nilly allowing them to listen to random podcasts. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is something that I think, you know, especially in this technology age that we have to be aware of because our kids, guess what? They're getting tech, they're getting privy to technology quicker and quicker. Be mindful of YouTube and what are the, you, you know, they're following these gamers and following this and that. And you, you, we just have to really look at what we're taking in unconsciously because there's so much that feeds into that same mindset. Girl, I, this was some years ago, but I was, um, I always like have always checked whatever my son's watching. You know, if I'm gonna let him watch a couple of, you know, a couple of shows, educational shows, I'm looking at what it is. So I was looking at this one show and we tend to do like well we used to now you know i'm a little a little bit more lenient with the, the what he looks at but we would tend to do just educational stuff abc's one two threes you yeah. know that kind of thing and there was this one cartoon where um there it was there was all white uh characters in the cartoon and then the one black character and i can't remember what if it was like a uh one of those what do you call those songs like a ring around the roses one of right. those kind of songs um or what but it was the one black character who they the police picked him up and sent him to jail and i was like wait what and we were watching it and then i saw this come across the screen and i was like oh, oh no i mean i had to like immediately you know click unsubscribe block you know because right. this is not the message but that was in a, a my son was like three ish. Mm -hmm. So that was in an educational cartoon that was not made in the US, by the way. So this is not a US conversation. This is a right. global conversation. I know some of the some of the black people in UK are pissed because they get marginalized and think people think there's no racism in the UK. But of course, because guess what? The people you know, like all the colonizers come from Europe anyway. So. Exactly. Like, that's, that's, <laughs> that's like the okay. origin. Right. <laughs> You're right. That's the origin. But yeah, so I mean, it's, just, it's, it's like that, that, you know, we're watching what we're taking in, we're watching with, and it all starts with that awareness because then, then when we have that awareness, when we have that place of, yeah, we're inside this culture, then yes, we can be like, okay, I'm going back. We're going into the school systems, right? Yes. To try to prevent this whole um, school to prison pipeline. You right. know, we're going in our to, we're sp supporting our small black businesses, you know, online and offline in the communities, right? So we're starting to infuse money into our community mm -hmm. and also infuse education, not just um, the traditional, education, but real, true education of 
of the historical education so that mm -hmm. we can be empowered to get out of whatever struggle that we're getting out of and begin to infuse and empower the community to raise, to rise up. So my question is, do we infiltrate this, this system that's already put in place to put us down or again, create our own system? So we're going to infiltrate the educational system, right? Um, mm -hmm. And demand that they, um, you know, put the, you know, correct the history that they're teaching our children or demand that um, they incorporate um, fair testing practices. Mm -hmm. Or do we start to branch out? This is my question. Do we start to branch out and create our own schools? Yeah. Our, you know, our own within our own communities, building up again, when I say our own, building up our own communities, yeah. creating our own schools, banking systems, things of that nature, like yeah. Tulsa. Let's use the example yeah. of Tulsa, how we That's had that whole, it was a threat. They knew it was a threat. So we had Tulsa, right? We had that whole community. What if we go back to that concepts that our ancestors were trying to create? Like, you don't want us in your system that is fine, we'll create our own and we can build up our own. So how do you feel about that? You know, I, so here's what I think. I, I, I think that part of, one of the symptoms of white supremacy culture is this concept of either or. Right. Why not both? Why not both? Mm -hmm. Why not create our own schools, our own communities, and at the same time be in the system? Like we can be in the system and not be of the system. You know, I think it's important for us to be you know, infiltrate and be inside of the system because then there's there's stop points, there's checkpoints for when we do build our own communities and we do build our own schools to, to that they're not torn down because we have people who are inside of the larger system supporting the systems that we build inside of the systems. It's like, you know, there's there's a uh, that the you know the Asian community, the Indian community, the Middle Eastern community. If you go to and I know you you you're in California, so this is real thing yes. in California. They have their they have their hoods, their neighborhoods, right. and they thrive inside of the neighborhoods. I know New York is like this. Parts of Atlanta is like this, right? Mm -hmm. Where they have their and they're allowed to have their neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. But we see things like Tulsa, Oklahoma, happen where when mm -hmm. we build strong communities, they're torn down. We're you know virtually the only, and you know, I hate to use absolutes, but it, it, it occurs to me like we're the only culture of people that that has, happens to in the United States, Yes, right? Where people want to burn down our community as soon as we, you know, get to a certain point. So that's why I think it is important not to live in that either or um, mindset and to expand into the and. Yes, we can have our own schools and we can be inside the system. Yes, we can demand for fair testing and equal and um, you know, equal um, opportunity and all of these things. And we can have our own space of, you know, educating around the history mm -hmm. of and supporting black businesses and infusing money into our communities. We can do both. Because the truth is, I mean, it's there's a colonization mindset, but I don't believe for one second that all white people don't want us in their system. I right. don't believe one second for one second that we don't have true allies that are fighting for us, that are standing with us, right? And I, and I know that because <laughs> I, I stand with some of these people, like my partner in this whole anti-racism training culture, she's a white woman mm -hmm. and, you know, salt to the earth, like truly, like always doing her deep work, you mm -hmm. know? And so I think it's the and situation and, and, but that starts with that education. It starts with that education so that we can do both, yes. you know? And I feel like that's the key. So until we liberate our minds, we won't be free. And I feel like that is the reason why we keep having these bumps in the roads is because our mind is not liberated. Mm -hmm. Meaning our mind yeah. is not free from the systems that have been put in place to keep us captive. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I think one of the examples is how we, how we treat each other how we, um, how the, the, the system of white supremacy has affected our relationship inside of our community. Yes. The colorism, the way we deal with black businesses. Example, you go to a black business, you have a bad experience, right? 
because guess what? In the white in the white businesses and the black businesses, there's gonna be a the, a bad possibility experience. of a yeah. bad experience, right? Mm-hmm. You have a bad experience. You and then I, true true to life, I've heard this. That's why I don't support black businesses. That's what happens. Oh, but you go to a white business, you have a bad experiences. Let me speak to your manager. Why don't you ask that the black business used to speak to them? Exactly. Manager, exactly. Right? Oh, flip side though. Let me get at the business owners because I am one, right? We get so sensitive about taking feedback, right? Mm-hmm. So we as business owners have to get real good at taking feedback because guess what? Defensiveness, white supremacy culture characteristic. So right. we got to know that the feedback that we give each other is not First of all, the feedback that's given has to not be malicious. Right. right. But the feedback that is received, it has to be confident that it's not malicious. And and take the feedback as a way to grow and shift the business so that it can be as excellent as any other and even so more so. You know, I go, I I, I can't tell you, I, I just I always look for black um, service providers, yes. black businesses to support. Yes. You know, do I shop at major chains? I do. But like, there are certain things that if I know I can get it at a, at a black business, that's, that's where, where I I'm go going. to. That's what I'm Same always way. looking for. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and if there is a, a less than desirable experience that I have, which I have, I talk directly to the people, to the yeah. owner. And, and my experience has been that they've taken that feedback and, and accommodated, Right we can accommodate just as much as a white business or an an other ethnic owned Mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. So we have to, we, this is part of that colonization mindset. We have to deal with each other. Like we deal with a white person. Like I, in my anti-racism trainings, I tell white people, if you wouldn't say it to another white person, don't fix your lips to say it to a black person, but we need to take that on ourselves. Like if this is not something that you, the way you would treat a white person, a white business, don't treat a black person, a black business this this mm-hmm. way, right? Like, like let's let's be kind and be loving and be empowering to each other, you know, so that, and that's a that's a shift in mindset. And some people might be saying, well, I don't do that. I don't. Do, that's if it's not you, you take what you like and leave the rest. Right. But you got to understand that as a culture this is a problem and i've seen it over and over and over again and and that speaks to why the dollar doesn't last what more than three hours in our community mm-hmm. right so we can mm-hmm. take and we can learn from other communities let's bring up the jews how their dollar circulates what 30 days yeah it circulates yeah. like 30 days within their community we can do the same we can this is part of us liberating ourselves. We can do the same. They, their community can sustain. They're, this is a yeah. perfect example of what you said, the end of being in the system, but be, not being of the system. So mm-hmm. the Jews are in the system, but they're not of the system because they're able to mm-hmm. sustain within yeah, each that. other. That's, right. That's why their dollar is able to circulate. And I wholeheartedly believe we can do the same. But it's, we it can. comes, we have to come together. Mm-hmm. And the way to come together is, you know, and I know, I know, I know there's so many different factors that plays a role into our households, like taking yeah. the black man out of the household and that there's more black men incarcerated. And right. again, that right. plays into the system, right? That's right. set up by the design and, you know, mm-hmm. leaving a black woman to fend and, 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 right. and um, you know, take care of the household and things of that nature. Mm-hmm but we can come together to break free from that right to break free from perpetuating into these cycles making sure yeah. that we don't play into you know the traps that they have put out there for us mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. set up our men and our women to be taken out of the household or out of the right. communities right right where mm-hmm. if there is a food desert we can create our own create our own within the community like you know, we can have urban food gardens. Yes. You know, getting yes. back to the, you know, cultivating the ag- in the agriculture. And, and I know that there is, um, I know that there is hurt for lack of better words, but um, of us between agriculture and, you know, of us, you know, from back in the day of, you know, you know, being enslaved and, 
and working in the farms and things of that nature in the cotton field, but we have to get back to our roots. That's how we can sustain our communities with, you know, with yeah. agriculture. And we're getting back to it. I mean, there's like, you know, there are, are black farming uh, associations. Yes, I was able to be privy and are, a part of that here I, in California. I, there's awesome. black farmers yes, here in Atlanta in Georgia too. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. There's um there's you know black food co-ops that are popping right. up. And so, you know, to, to even bring it all the way back around is it's it's not like we're starting at ground zero, y'all. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have the 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 bones, the structure, the knowledge. Yeah. And things are starting to move, right? So, so we just need to continue to keep that momentum, you know. And part of that, like you said, is coming together, and 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 decolonizing that mindset, yeah. and and being, I think, just we really, really being good to each other. We have, you to. know, understand. We got to talk about this. Is a whole nother conversation. We got to talk about the the black female and male dynamic and inside of our community because yes. we got to heal these black re these relationships between black men and women not even just like you know partnerships but like moms and and sons and and daughter and dads and daughters and cousins and brothers and sisters yes. and and just you know black men and, and black women in the community in general then you know we got to talk about um Un, un, unveiling the truth about the dynamic between black women. It's portrayed that it's one way, but it's, but it's not. We, right. we, are, we, so we are sisters. And yeah. it is, I mean, I'm, I'm in a whole bunch of communities, different communities, physician mm -hmm. communities and mom communities. And, you know, we sisters be coming together. And mm -hmm. I think yeah. that we, we have to continue to break the, um, the, per, the perspective of right. black women don't support each other because yep. if we keep if we keep spitting that out then we're going to continue to create it if we that. keep spitting out that there's a bad dynamic between black men and black women then we're going to continue to create it so we just got to like continue to break down those narratives right. that have been um placed up on us and that we continue to eat from those plates so that we can you know realize the truth of who we really are not only internally and personally, but as uh, oh, partners, yeah. as communities, as sisters and brothers, as a community as a whole. I think it starts with that. And it does start with the individual work. You know, people like you and me, you know, right. we, we do, we help people to do that deep work to get rid of those old hurts, to get rid of those old pains, to get rid of those old conversations. Uh, right. I think it starts with each person being responsible for their own mindset. Yes, yes, people have to go back into the community, but at the end of the day, if you are listening to this podcast, you share it, some person is going to either take responsibility or they're going to choose to continue to be asleep. Yes. And each individual person has to choose to wake up, choose to be willing to right. do the deep work to get rid of those old conversations. You and know what I'm saying? You know what? And I, I know that we probably said so much and people are like, oh my goodness. So I know <laughs> we said so much and I definitely want to sum it up of the things mm -hmm. that can help liberate us. Number one, we yeah. stated community coming together as mm -hmm. a community. In order mm -hmm. for us to come and come together as a community, we have to do the healing work within ourselves, within our own mm -hmm. family mm -hmm. dynamics, because mm -hmm. it starts there. It starts at the home. It starts with family, right? Mm -hmm. And then we can come mm -hmm. together and heal as a community. Number two, mm -hmm. educating one another so that we can educate ourselves and understanding mm -hmm. the importance of not just the community, but the black dollar about building mm -hmm. each other up, right? Yes. So educating ourselves about the sociopolitical dynamics so that we can mm -hmm. free ourselves from the sociopolitical dynamics, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. healing, education, and then also building. We stated yes. building, building, building. So once we do mm -hmm. those things, we sum up those things. Once we do those things, we can break free. Yes. I feel like we can break free, but it, it starts at the root and we have to get to the yeah. root. And it starts within ourselves, mm -hmm. within the family, and then outsource to the community. Yeah. And yeah. once we connect and, those, and those things, then I, mm -hmm. I honestly truly believe that we can break free from this and that we can start rising up, literally rising up. Yeah.
And and I want to just, you know, how you say, you know, break free. If if you don't mind, I want to sort of reframe it for some people. Mm -hmm. Be free. Be free. Yes. Be free. Be free. You know, because um, people can break free, but still be in prison. Yes. Yes. And you know what? And I'm glad that you stated that we can break free, but then you have to continue to be free. That's right. Right. And live in that freeness Mm -hmm. and then help others along the way. That's right. That's right. Love it. Girl, y'all knew this was going to be a good conversation. (laughs) (laughs) This is so important. This is so near and dear to my heart because like you stated, we, you know, yeah, you know, our, our, our mothers and our fathers grew up in a certain era, right, of having to, um, I feel like they had to survive. Yeah. They had to survive. And now, because of the work that they put in, we're able to thrive. That's right. We're able to thrive. And because we don't want to do it in vain, we're able to thrive. And now we need to be able to prosper. This is for our right. kids. Now we're able to prosper. And in order for us to prosper, we have to break free from the chains that were put on Mm -hmm. us so that we can be free and Mm -hmm. and, and live in this dynamic that is set, you know, not set up from them, but set up for us, for the success Mm -hmm. that is is divine. It's divine. Right. For all that we can be. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for this conversation. You know, like I said, part one of, of many conversations many. to come. Many. Yes. And and so I want you to let the listeners know how they can follow you, yes. how they can, you know, on all the platforms. And then if you have something that you offer, please let us know. And we're going to have all this in the show notes as well. Definitely. So I just want to thank you. Thank you so much for having me um, as a guest. And I look forward to many more conversations with you. This is liberating within itself just to be able to have this conversation with a like-minded individual. Again, my name is Dr. Alexis Rhodes and you can find me at traveling.psychdoc on Instagram or Dr. Alexis Rhodes on Clubhouse, as well as I have a website called Dr. Alexis Rhodes, that's D-R-A-L-I-X-I-S-R-H-O-D-E-S.com. And I have a book called The Road to Success, 31 Days of Self-Reflecting, where I went on my own journey of freeing myself of these, um, you know, these family dynamics, as well as um, uh, uh, what society portrays as success and trying to find out what success means to me. And that's what I'm living in my truth and what success means to me. Um, and And I put this book out there for other individuals to do the same, to find out what success means to them. Don't you know, operate in what society or what family or what friends put on you, you have to define it for yourself. And that's what the journey is about. So you can definitely find that on all platforms on amazon.com or dralexisroads.com. Again, thank you all. I appreciate this time. I appreciate you. I appreciate the work that you're doing in the community. So please continue. And I will continue to support you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And, and I just appreciate you for, for being open to the connection because I'd be randomly reaching out to people. <laughs> and so I love it when I, I meet a like spirit. So I appreciate that. Well, you guys, you heard it. Uh, Dr. Alexis Rhodes, you need to go check her out. DrAlexisRhodes.com, right? Yes. And um, you can find all of the information in the show notes. If you're listening on, um, if you're listening by audio, and if you are watching this um, via the video platform, you can find all the information in the show notes. So reach out to her. And once again, as always, I love to thank the listeners because guess what? Without the listeners, there is no podcast. So thank you so much. If you like what you're hearing, please, please leave a comment, leave a review so that the people listening behind you know what we're about and know that we're here to empower our community. So with that said, y'all have a great rest of the day. Please stay safe out there and we will see you on the next episode. Thank you. Have a good day. You're welcome. Thank you.